Hi boys and girls, this is Jeremy with AccustomGeek.com and I have an RGBW LED controller here. This is version 3.1 and I wanted to go over some of the features and, um, and neat things about this board. So uh, the first thing about this, uh, compared to the old version, it handles a lot more power. Um, the connectors are 5mm instead of the old 3.5. I have a, I'm going to switch here to the boards. Um, the new connectors are 5mm, the old ones were 3.5. The layout is a little bit different. I think it's a little bit more efficient. Um, Pretty much everything else is uh, the same, uh, except for the actual board, the traces here, if I can get this in the light, you can see there's a single trace carrying power here, and uh, there's there's traces here that go over to the individual channels of the LED, and that was good. Um, this one's a lot better. Uh, the traces are a little bit thicker, and then you can see here, I have traces on the front that go to all these things, and if you flip it over on the back, everything is traced on the back is mirrored, and so all the traces are double-sided. And so um, there's also, I'll go over some of the features with you on the actual board itself. So um, uh, we added a, um, a 10K pull-up to the reset line. So if you're uploading this with an FTDI adapter, that'll help that to go a little bit smoother. Uh, also added ICSP headers down here. So if you're into changing the bootloader, if not, this is not required for normal operation. Um, advanced users only, I'd recommend go ahead and do that. And then, of course, we have... Uh, the Adafruit XB adapter, and so if you have uh, an Adafruit XB adapter, you can make this pretty much instantly wireless by plugging that guy in, and uh, this guy powers uh, powers that. This controller powers the XB adapter as well as communication lines straight to it. So um, some of the other features, uh, as with the other one, if you're not familiar with the other one, this is a serial control, and uh, the serial control is either RS-232 or it is TTL, which is 5-volt logic. Um, so the chip does the translation between the two. It talks to this guy. It has some buttons here. And um, it also has an IR sensor. So I'm going to go over these functions next. Okay, we're going to go over the functions here. And um, we'll start with button 1, which controls the white LED. Uh, if I push this, just click it there shortly, uh, you can see that the LED turns on. It goes to 10%. If I click it again, 20%, 30%. You get the idea here. Now when I get to 100, it doesn't do anything. So uh, how to turn it off is you need to push and hold it for longer than a half a second, and it'll go to off. It'll fade to zero. Now, in the same light, if I'm at 30%, uh, and if I push and hold it, it'll also go to zero. Now, if you want to get to 100 without getting a sore thumb, just push and hold for longer than a half a second, and it'll go up to 100. So it's a way to get manual dimming control of your white channel if you don't want to use serial commands. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Uh, your, our other button here is going to go... It's going to cycle through the colors, and so here's red, and then green, and then blue. And you remember this from the old firmware if you had an older board or if you watched the other video. So it'll cycle through all the solid colors here, and a few of the mixed colors, magenta, cyan, um, yellow, or gold, and then go into RGB white. Now the next button is going to go to color cycle. Now here's where things change a little bit. Um, if I'm cycling in color, and this camera is kind of blowing this up a little bit, so I apologize about this, but um, it's cycling here, and if it goes around, and if I like a particular color, I can, I can tap it and say, okay, freeze. So it'll stay on that color. And so if I tap it again, what it'll do is it'll start the whole cycle again. And so how do I turn it off? Um, if I pause it, and the same thing to turn this guy off, if I push and hold it, it'll go to zero. And so that's, uh, that's some... That's some button control. Also, too, uh, everything is stored in EEPROM, the state of this button. And so if I have, um, you know, if I'm on blue, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. If I'm on blue and I unplug this and then the power goes out and it comes back on, it'll go to the last state that it's in, including the custom color that you pause the cycle on. It'll, it'll save that as well. So um, that's really, really cool. So another thing I want to show you is the IR sensor. So previous versions I did not write any support in this. The hardware is there, but the software is not. And so um, I want to show you something. Now, if I switch modes in this, I'm gonna. what I'm going to do to switch modes is I'm going to unplug the power. I'm going to hold down both of these buttons, and then I'm going to apply the power back. And you can see, I don't know how well this video will show, but that LED flashes about 20 times really, really fast. And what that means is now it'll listen to Ta-da! An IR remote. And so now we have this IR remote, and it'll, this will give commands uh, to the controller um, via IR. And then there is there's a bunch of commands. I think I'll go over that in a separate video. Um, I'll take you out to my kitchen where I have this 
I have some under and over cabinet lighting installed so you can get a better idea what's going on. Um, and so that's an IR mode. The buttons work in IR mode, but not great because it spends a lot of time listening for a timeout for IR. So um, they're not very responsive. Sometimes they don't respond, which is why I made two modes. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. To get back to a regular mode, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to um, disconnect power, hold down both buttons, and then keep them held down. And then when it comes out of IR mode, the Rayleigh LED will come on and it'll slowly fade away. So all the commands are documented in the firmware and on the website. So you can see those. Uh, this remote, what remote is this you say? This is a remote from Adafruit. These are uh, emit standard NEC codes. And so there's a lot of standard NEC codes that this guy uh, emits and uh, these are available on adafruit.com. There's a link uh, on the post for it. So um, let's go over some serial commands and then do an IR demonstration next. Okay guys, I have the Arduino software open here and I'm going to open the serial monitor and you can see that um, the firmware version pops up when it first boots up. And I'm going to go over some of the serial commands here. So um, this is the code. I have the code open here and uh, I'll have these commands uh, written in the manual. Here's some of the IR commands. Uh, right here, and then we're going to just go over some of the serial commands now. So uh, there's four basic commands to control the four channels, um, the RGB and W channels, and so those commands are white, red, green, and blue. So if I wanted white at 45%, uh, I type in white 45, and I would get white at 45%. Whoops. A great time to show you the all off command. Um, that's all off. Now if I type in white 45, now white will go to 45%. And so um, in the same light, that works with red, green, and blue too. You can mix custom colors and whatnot. Um, scrolling down a little bit more, we have go blue, go green, and go red commands. So if I wanted blue, instead of typing blue 100, red 0, green 0, I can say go blue, which means I want everything uh, blue and the other colors off. So when I do that, it'll say blue. It'll shut off all the other colors and go blue 100%. And so um, I can shut those all off. Uh, outside of that, I have I've had some uh, I have some other colors: uh, magenta, cyan, gold, RGB white, orange, light blue, light green, violet, pink, and uh, RGB warm white. And so uh, I can say um, pink, and I will get pink. And so right, I'm not going to go through all the colors because uh, it'll get boring. <laughs> and so there is a cycle command. So if I go to cycle, it'll give me a cycle started, and it'll just basically color cycle that uh, uh, that guy there. I can say, uh, go ahead and pause, and sometimes uh, it'll wait a second or two until it catches the serial check, and then it'll say cycle pause. It'll pause on on the cycle. Um, I can control the, uh, the speed of the cycle by saying rate. But if I say rate um, four, uh, what that'll do is that'll change the speed of the cycle and make it faster or slower. Um, also, I'm going to these ramp is notice like if I type in all off, um, how fast that LED fades out. You can control that by the ramp. The default value is four. If I put the ramp at uh, let's say two, um, and I say uh, blue uh, 80, 89, that's a much uh, faster ramp up uh, than four. So you can control the speed of that here. We'll put the ramp back to four and then turn all the LEDs off. So uh, the ramp um, and the rate. Uh, the stay is if you have the cycle going, let's say the stay we want to be uh, three, which is three seconds. And so what that does is you can see when the cycle is going, and um, let's see if I can maybe knock some of these lights, I don't know if that'll make it better or worse, but the color cycles now, and the stay is how long it pauses on each color. And so it's going through and it's pausing three seconds on each color because of that, um, because of that value there. And so we can go ahead and send pause command, let me turn this back on here. And then uh, now the cycle is paused, we can turn everything off, and then all LEDs are off. And so scrolling down here, that's the ramp. Uh, bright and dim are RGB only, and so if I have... Um, Let's say I have pink, and um, pink is on, and I want to say dim. What it'll do is it'll knock the RGB values down by 10%, and then it'll also display what the current RGB values are uh, through, through feedback here. 
And so I can keep going down and it'll keep going down until they hit zero and then of course they won't be uh, they won't be on anymore. They'll just go to zero and then they won't get any dimmer. Obviously, but they won't get any brighter either. Um, the same thing with bright. I can brighten. Now brighten will brighten all RGB channels. So all the channels are going to come up uh, a bit on that. And that's how bright works. Um, but there is also uh, stat. Stat gives you the status of whatever that color is right there. It's kind of terrible to this video. I apologize. But um, if I type in stat, it'll give you all the levels and what their ramp rate is. Uh, and if there's a cycle going, it'll give you the cycle mode too. So, um, okay, guys, we are in my kitchen, and I have a controller stuck above the coffee maker there in the corner, and then I have warm white strip on the bottom of the cabinets, and I put some RGB on the back uh, of the cabinets on the top. And so, I want to go over some of the IR functions here. You get kind of a better idea of what's going on here. So, uh, a little bit easier on the camera. I uh, apologize, the remote is kind of hard to see, but I'll, I'll have a picture up there so you can see what I'm doing. Um, this is everything off, and so uh, I'm sorry. This is everything on. So uh, the stop slash mode button is is everything off. And so if I click that, uh, RGB shuts off, and then the white channel turns off. And then it is really really dark here. Uh, but if I push the setup button, that's white to 100%. It's a white toggle, is what it is. And so if the white is on, it'll turn on, or off, and then if it's off, it'll turn on. Um, basic toggle operation. And then the left and right buttons. Uh, control the dimness. What this does is it knocks down the level of uh, the white there and then um, I can go up as well and so uh, that's that and then the keypad numbers um, the the one four and seven are the red and the four is simply a toggle and so uh, there is red and then it'll toggle off if I want to brighten that a little bit um, I can go up here with one, and then seven is down, and again, four toggles that guy. The same thing with the green, and then the same thing with the blue. I can toggle the green off. And so um, the up and down arrows control the overall brightness of RGB. And so if I turn everything off here, and I say I want to get a little bit of blue here, and then I throw in a hair of green, and then a little bit of red. If I want that brighter but not change it, I can hit up, and it'll brighten the whole uh, the whole range of LEDs. And so you can see that's getting brighter. When one level gets 100, it'll obviously stay at 100, and the other ones will continue to rise until they're all at 100. Um, so let's say uh, this is another cool feature here. This has a, a memory bank, and so say you get this and um, let's turn everything off and I want to say I want to set this up for nighttime and so uh, nighttime is maybe a little bit of warm white and then maybe we'll just brighten our RGB across the board here uh, take a little bit of red out of there there we go so I want to save that so the middle button is enter save now I can press save and what that does is it flashes and it lets me know that I saved it so now what we do is uh, we have this on full blast and then we turn off uh, that and then I don't know what we do. We actually let's turn something on here. Let's go full bright magenta and white because that's pleasant. So if we hit recall, uh, what that does is that puts us back to what we had last saved. And so you can see uh, the RGB white minus a little bit of red plus the, the dim under the cabinet lighting is that memory bank. And so those are the basic functions there. Um, oh yeah, and zero plus 10 key, that turns everything on full brightness. And so if you want everything up quickly, that does that stop, turns everything on, and zero, the plus 10 key, turns everything on. I still think stop, turns everything off, excuse me. Um, one last button, and that's cycle. Cycle is a little bit finicky because it checks the IR uh, as much as it can during the cycle, but sometimes it takes a few key presses to put it. And so um, to cycle, uh, you simply press play and then voila, it'll go ahead and color cycle. Uh, the same button pauses. And so if you have that uh, button here, I just hit pause. And then also the volume is the rate. And so I can crank up the rate here and um, go ahead and do that. And then I can hit uh, cycle again and it'll be It'll, it'll change the speed of the cycles is what it does. And so that's uh, that's fun to play with. But 
Usually I don't have cycling RGB in my kitchen because my wife will kill me. So uh, that's the basic functions of that. I hope this helps. Uh, very good if you want to do pretty much exactly what I did here. I can control it with my home automation, but if you just want a simple remote, um, this works well for just having an IR remote just laying on the counter so you can control you can have control of your LED lighting in your house. Hey guys and girls, I wanted to go over this bottom row of header here. Uh, what these are are the pins that are not used to control these guys are broken out down here so you can do some other cool things with this board. Um, on the right here, starting from the right, moving to the left, we have ground and five volts. I'm sorry, actually five volts and ground. That's a auxiliary power if you want to run something like I squared C, which are the next two pins. And so there's the um, SDA and SCL lines there, along with ground and five volt. So those are four handy pins to control whatever widget. Um, analog pins uh, four through zero are next, along with 12, 13, 7, 6, 5, and 4. Um, four is shared with the one of the switches. Uh, the other switch uses eight that is not broken out. Um, and then pin two is over here, which is also the IR pin. And then gr another ground and five volt. The reason that these three guys are in a row is because this is the pin configuration of an IR sensor. And so if you wanted to use an IR sensor remotely, you can simply plug one into here and bring it out remotely. You can even use the same one that comes with a kit if you know you're not going to use it on the board and you want to extend it elsewhere. Uh, you can run wires from here out to um, a distant location and hook up the IR sensor there. Um, that's pretty much it. The Adafruit XP adapter, uh, again, like I said before, is for these guys here. This is an Adafruit XP adapter board uh, here. And um, if you want to use XPs for radios to make this guy wireless, they simply plug into here and uh, they just work. So uh, that brings communication and it also powers this guy here. So, um, and also an FTDI adapter here, uh, so if you want to communicate with this using serial and play with it or upload sketches, this does have an Arduino bootloader, so it will upload using the FTDI port. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. One last thing about the new firmware and the new board is that the board layout is different, and the firmware has some new features uh, with buttons and serial commands and IR. And it will work. It is pin compatible with the old version of the board. And so version 2.2 is compatible. And even if you have a version 1.9 from uh, a way back, uh, it is compatible with these two boards too. And so if you get the new firmware off of the website, you can upgrade uh, your older boards and it'll work and behave exactly the same as the new ones. So happy upgrading and thanks for watching.